Hey, Mom, good morning. Pouncer Kizzy, good morning. Um, let me see here. I have to turn my music off. Hallelujah. Sister, amen, amen. Sister Crawford, good morning. I got you on mute. I'm going to mute everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Apostle. I'm going to mute everybody and get started here. Okay. Praise I'm going to be able to talk on all the way to church. All right. All right, then. All Bless. Right. All right. All right. Amen. Hey, good morning. Good morning, uh, Saran. How you doing this morning? Praise God. We getting started here. I'm kind of kind of a little early this morning. Uh, so let me start my recording and this call is being recorded. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us go into the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. Lord, we realize and recognize that you have been better to us than we have been to ourselves. You woke us up this morning, you clothed us in our right minds, and you gave us a reasonable portion of health and strength. Lord, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all of the praise. We thank you, Lord, this day, that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We come to you, Father, first and foremost, after praising your holy name, to ask you to forgive us for all of our sins and our shortcomings. Lord, we thank you for your forgiveness because we know that it came through the blood of Jesus Christ. It was not a cheap forgiveness. He had to die for our sins, Lord. And he died for our sins and you raised him from the dead. So, Lord, we say to you, thank you for Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Because of him, we now have access to uh, uh, all that you are and we can come to you and give you all the glory, give you all the praise, and give you all of the honor. So, Lord, we just say thank you, thank you, thank you for your saving grace. Thank you for your darling son, Jesus Christ. And then, Lord, when you took him up into heaven and set him at your right hand, uh, right hand of your throne, Lord, where he's now sitting interceding for us. Lord, you did not leave us helpless. You did not leave us hopeless, but you sent your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus Christ, to, to rest, rule, and abide in us, Lord. So we thank you for your Holy Spirit that seals us until the day of redemption. Thank you, God, for your anointed Holy Spirit who teaches us your word, who brings all of your word to our remembrance, who convicts us and then directs us as we go throughout our I walk in you, O oh God. We thank you right now for your Holy Spirit. And then, Lord, we just ask you as we get ready to, to study your word today in Sunday school to Heavenly Father, we just ask you to just have your way. We plead the blood of Jesus over everyone that is connected through the conference call, through Facebook, God, those that are going to listen to this recording. Uh, later, Lord, we just ask you right now to just anoint them afresh, shower them with your blood. Whatever their circumstances or situations are, help them, the Heavenly Father. Help us all to understand that it's just a small thing when it comes to your power because you are great and awesome God. He that is in us is greater than he that is in this world. So, Lord, we give you praise this morning. We give you glory this morning. We say thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus for being God and being God all by yourself. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, and we praise you. Bless now this technology. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Welcome, everybody, again to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition. And I am your host, uh, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. Today we'll be studying the book of Galatians. We've been in Galatians for the last couple of weeks in our Sunday school lesson. And today we're in Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. 
Galatians chapter 5, and, and we're looking at verses 1 through uh, 17. Um, the title of today's lesson is Jesus Makes Me Free, because it gets personal. It just ain't Jesus make us free. It gets personal. Jesus makes me free. So, so we're going to be looking at this text. And uh, I want to read it out of the New Living Translation of the Bible. Um, so let's read the text out of the New Living Translation of the Bible. Galatians chapter 5 starting at verse 1. Galatians chapter 5 starting at verse 1. And it reads as follows. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Mark my words. I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourself be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. You who are trying to be justified by the law have given, I mean, have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace for though the spirit we but for through the spirit we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope for in Christ Jesus neither circumcised nor uncircumcised has any value the one thing the only thing, excuse me, that counts is faith expressing itself through love. He said, read that one again. The only thing, the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. You were running a good race. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? The kind of persuasion this that kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you a little yeast works through a whole batch of dough i am confident in the lord that you will take no other view the one who is throwing you into confusion whoever they may be will have to pay the penalty Brothers and sisters, if I am still preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In the case, in, in that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. As for those agitators, I wish that they would be go the I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. Verse 13, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. Do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit. And you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit. And the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other. So that you are not to do whatever you want. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, the text says is a, is, a, is a very long text. It's a very uh, 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 theological deep text. But, but when we approach this text today, we're going to make this as simple as possible. Uh, as I said earlier, that was Galatians chapter 5 verses 1 through 7. And uh, and the title of today's text is Jesus Makes Me Free. Um, our, our, our key verse is verse 13. And verse 13 says this out of the New Living Translation. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. And so, so, so that, that verse, that verse, it, it really brings out the fact that if, if we're in Christ, he has called us, Jesus has called us, and he has made us free. We are free. We are free in Christ Jesus. We are free to live as God always meant for us to live. But this does not mean that we are free to be selfish. It does not mean that we can talk like we at Burger King and have it our way. No, no, that ain't that ain't what it's saying. What we can't go around just doing anything we want to do. But we are free to use our freedom to love and serve others. Oh yeah, yeah. Let me let me just sit right there before we go deeper into the, to the to the outline and tell you what's going on. Look, 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 look. Most of the time when we talk about being free, we think of being freed from something, being free from something. We're being freed from a bondage. We're being freed from slavery. We're being freed from a burden. We're being set free from, from all. Yeah, yeah, that, that's how we always think of freedom, being set free from something. But 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 what Paul is going in this text, and, and what 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 jumped out in me as I was studying this text is we're not just free from something. The evil of sin. And all its penalties and all the power that sin can have over us. But we are freed to something. What are we free to do? We are free to love one another. Oh, hallelujah. That, that's an awesome freedom. Somebody on Facebook should have caught that and just said, amen. You are free to love. You are free to love others. And that that freedom, that freedom to love others is so awesome. I mean, that, that says that I can love people and, and I don't have to be afraid to love on folks, to serve people, to be humble. I, I don't have to be afraid that, that if I'm kind and if I'm meek, somebody going to run me over. No, you are free because God did not give us the spirit of fear. But he gave us uh, uh, the spirit of, uh, uh, of faith and of love and of power and of a sound mind. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are free to love. You don't get nothing else out of this whole message. Realize that you are free to love. We are free to love. So now let, let's get down and, and, and deal with some of the key concepts, the key concepts, and I just really kind of talked about it. We are free to love and serve others. Uh, I like to make this lesson real plain, and I, and I deal with it from, from, I call it the Keys for Kids. I know somebody else got a whole little program called the Keys for Kids, but I like to bring it out as the Keys for Kids when they listen to this lesson. And, and, and this to me is just, this just making it simple and making it plain. Number one, Jesus died to save us and to set us free from sin. That's the first thing. That's the first thing we're going to talk about. And then uh, number two, even a small amount of something bad can ruin something that is good. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. That 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 scripture in there we're talking about a little yeast can spoil a whole batch of bread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the 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 the, the final keys for kids is let God's spirit guide you and what God wants you to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now, so that that's my keys for kids. Now, now for my deep theologians who who say, well, you know, I don't be wanting to just come to Sunday school and get get the kids lesson. I want to go deep into the lesson. I want to get down deep into the word. Well, well, let, let's get down deep into the word then. So today's lesson, we're going to have some lesson or learning facts. We're going to summarize Paul's concern regarding the status of the Galatians. Again, we're going to summarize Paul's concern regarding the status of the Galatians. The biblical principle that we're going to look at is to contrast the life of freedom in Christ with the life of slavery to self or even to the world. And then the last uh, daily application that we're going to get to is to celebrate the Holy Spirit's presence in our life. So our outline is in three parts. Uh, part number one is freedom in Christ. That's verses one through six of Galatians chapter five. Uh, our second point for today is love fulfills the law. Love fulfills the law. That's verses 7 through 15 of Galatians chapter 5. And then our next point is walking in the spirit. Walking in the spirit, verses 16 through 17. So we're going to deal with freedom in Christ. We're going to deal with love fulfills the law. And we're going to deal with walking in the spirit. Amen. Amen. So that's that's what we're going to walk in today. So so now it's a couple of words I want to add to the thing so that we can catch these words as we get through, get down to them. You, we're going to see the word, but, you know, talking about a believer, a believer is those who accept and follow Jesus Christ. We're going to talk about faith a little bit. Faith is a strong is the strong belief in God. We're going to deal with freedom and freedom. Like I was talking about earlier is when you when you've been set free from something and delivered from someone's control or something that is controlling you. And then. We're going to contrast Gentiles. Those are those who, who are not Jews. And then we know who Jewish people are. Jewish people are those who, who are the tribe of, of, of the family of, excuse me, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then we're going to talk about this yeast because this little yeast. And then we've got, got a few words we're going to be talking about. So now the background of this lesson, the background of this lesson is that, uh, um, Paul has been dealing with uh, the the Galatians, and and the Galatians have 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 is a church that he went and preached the gospel to, and now uh, they they're, they're these guys that's coming from Jerusalem who who do not care who do not care for what uh, he was saying. Uh, they 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 had a Jerusalem council uh, where. They said, well, when Gentiles come into the church, uh, they, they are free. They, they don't have to follow Jewish laws and Jewish rituals. And, and so the, 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 the church in, in Jerusalem agreed to this, and, and that was it. But then there were some in the group who were former Pharisees and, 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 and former uh, 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 Jewish believers who have now converted to Christ who wanted to put some stipulations on those Gentiles who came into the faith. They wanted to put the law back on them. And so Paul was dealing with these folks. He was like, no, 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 you don't, 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 don't listen to them. Circumcision has no value. Circumcision has no value at all. It, 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 what, what's value is your faith in Jesus Christ because you're saved by grace and grace alone. Grace. You're saved by grace. You're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. But these people wanted to pull the law. They wanted to bring the law in. And when they, when they, their whole thing was, you must follow the law. 
But Paul in this in this passage of scripture is going to tell them how to fulfill the law. Because the, the whole trip is, is that no matter who you are, if you fail following the law in one small thing, you fail the whole law. So let's deal with this first part of the lesson. Uh, um uh, do, uh, 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 the first part of the lesson is dealing with being free in, in Christ. You, you have freedom in, in Christ. And, 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 and this, it's, this, this right here, I could spend all day in the first part of this text. But I'm, I'm going to try to get it as, as quickly as I can. Listen to it from the Message Bible. Verse 1 says, Christ has set us free to live a free life. So, so take your stand. Never again let anyone put a harness of slavery on you. We've been set free. Christ has set us free. The word of God says, if you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. Over in John chapter 32, or John chapter 8, verse 32. And then it says in John chapter 8, verse 36, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. So, so we have been set free by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are free from the penalty of sin. We are free from, 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 from the power of sin. We are free from our position in sin. We're no longer in that position. And one glad morning, we're going to be free from the very presence of sin when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. But we are free. We've been set free. Christ has set us free. And so Paul then goes on, and, and I'm going back now in verse 2 and 3, I'm, I'm going back now to, well, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go back to the, to the New Living Translation. He says, look, 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 mark my words. I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourself be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, I declare Every man who lets himself be circumcised, that he is obligated to obey the whole law. You, verse 4, you who are trying to just be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. For, for, for verse 5, for, for though the Spirit for through the Spirit we eagerly await by faith the, the righteousness for which we hope. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcised nor uncircumcised has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing uh, itself through uh, Christ Jesus. So what Paul is saying here, what Paul is saying here to them is look. You, you running around talking about you got to be circumcised. So that means you're trying to follow uh, the, 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 the Jewish law of circumcision. But what you don't understand is that circumcision was just a symbolic act that, that God used with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the children of Israel and under Moses to help them to understand that if you circumcise yourself, you now have a clean heart. Your, your heart is being clean. That, that, that's, that's what it was symbolic of. Circumcision didn't make you clean. It was just symbolic of it. And so, 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 so Paul was like, look, you, you can't be going around dealing with that mess. That, that's, that's not what I call you to do. You, you got to stand firm in your faith. You can't be entangled with all of this. You can't be yoked. With all of this, because here's the thing. If, if Christ's death, burial, and resurrection wasn't enough to save you, how can a prerequisite of being circumcised save you? Christ then, with his death, burial, and resurrection was not profitable enough to bring you into salvation, to set you free? How do you think a prerequisite of being circumcised is going to do anything? Oh, hallelujah. And then the key here is, again, if you are a debtor to keep the whole law, you know, meaning that, that you have to keep the whole law, not just a part of it. 
But we've been justified by faith. Our faith in Jesus Christ. Now, now, now this verse 4. Like I said, I could stay up in here all day. It talks about being estranged from Christ. Falling from grace. This, this word means that you've been separated from Christ. You've been, been severe. You've been taken away from Christ. And, and, and that word falling means you have lost your grasp uh, on something. And you, 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 you're falling away from it. But now some people have said, oh, well, Paul is saying here that you can lose your salvation. That's what he's saying. You can fall from grace. You can be separated from Christ. No, that ain't what Paul is saying. Don't take it that far. If you that that's what you want to feed on, that somebody can lose their salvation. Well, what you're dealing with is you're basing your salvation on that person's work. Our salvation ain't based on our work. Our salvation, again and again, I'm gonna keep saying, is based on our faith. In Jesus Christ. So what Paul is saying here is. Is that you heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. You heard about his death. His burial and his resurrection. You heard about his amazing grace. And you. Are now trying to get salvation through faith. I mean through, through works. If you are trying to get salvation through works. Then you have fallen away. You have never received God's grace. Because the only way to receive God's grace, his favor, his unmerited favor, his gift of life and gift of salvation is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have to accept it. You have to receive it. God is ready to give it. But if you're trying to earn it and trying to work for it, I'm sorry, you'll never, ever get it. You have fallen away. You are separate. And there were some Galatians uh, that were dealing with it from that standpoint. If they had heard the gospel, but yet they were rejecting the gospel for this, this, this work. Oh, hallelujah. 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 So, so that's, that's what they were dealing with. So Paul goes on and he says to him, look, 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 y'all. Y'all need to understand something. I don't have no problem with circumcision. I ain't got no problem with it. But circumcision won't save you. Whether you circumcise or uncircumcise, ain't no problem. That ain't what saves you. What saves you is Christ Jesus. That's what counts. And, and, and Christ Jesus, his main thing that he wants us to do, once we are saved, once you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the most important thing you can do is to love others. And by your faith being expressed, expressing itself in love, by faith, we can then work through love. If you don't have faith in God, and you don't have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection, your love is, 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 is nothing. You need the love of Christ in you in order to love yourself and to love others. You got to love God first. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and soul. And then love your neighbor. As you love yourself. So now we're going to go to our second part of our lesson. That that was we're free in Christ. And, and I got to say we are free in Christ to love. I, I, we, that, that's what it's saying. You, you, you're free in Christ to love. Now the next part of the lesson is love fulfills the law. Verses 7 to 15. And I'm reading it out of the, the, the New Living Translation. You are running a good race. Who cut, who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? Galatians chapter 5 verse 8. That, that kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. A little yeast 
works through the whole batch of dough. I am confident in the law and the Lord that you will take no other view. The one who is throwing you into confusion, whoever they may be, will have to pay the penalty. Brothers and sisters, if I am still preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that, in that case, the office of the cross has been abolished. As for those agitators, I wish that they, that they would uh, uh, go the whole way and emasculate themselves. Paul is saying in this text, he's saying, look, 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 look. You need to understand that love, that love fulfills the whole thing. Let's go on to verse 13. You, my brethren and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out. You will be destroyed by each other. Paul is saying, look here. However these folks were that came and try to persuade you to obey the law of, of, uh, of Moses and follow all of the Jewish traditions. They, they, they are trying to mess up your mind. They are just causing confusion. And we know that, 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 that the spirit of God is not the author of confusion. Let me bring this for a minute. I, 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 I'm, I'm laying down this theology in this text, but I, I don't. I hadn't brought this to our today's world. In today's world, one of the things that is 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 apparent is that the millennium. Uh, I, I don't want to call them people. Most of them are children, but I call them children because I got children almost 40 years old but but the the millennium age people are not coming to church and when you ask them well, well why don't you come to church and they say things like nobody's listening to us we're sick of hearing your values and your mission statements ain't nobody helping the poor it's not a priority we, you, you, and you're always trying to blame uh, our culture on, on the what's going on in the world. All these different things. But but what really what really got the millennium generation not coming to church? They said we come to church, and instead of us receiving love and receiving faith in in Jesus Christ, we got people walking around trying to be enforcers. In the church to enforce their way of living, quote unquote, righteous, working for their salvation. And we have to be careful, church. We have to be careful when people that we come in contact with, especially this millennium generation, we got to give them love. We can't tell them they got to do this and do that and do this and do that in order to be in Christ. All they have to do to be in Christ Jesus is to believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus and invest their faith in him through grace. Then they will receive the free gift. And once they receive the gift of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is now in them. And the Holy Spirit will help them walk right, will help them talk right, will help them live right. And so Paul is saying to us, look, give people love. Stop confusing them 
with all of these works and all of these rituals. Give them love. And if they get love, they'll fulfill the law. They'll do what's right. We have to trust God's love. His love. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him. Shall not perish. But have everlasting life. I trust God's love. I believe in God's love. Because he has shown me. Oh hallelujah. How much he loves me. Because he died on the cross. He demonstrated his love for us. In that while we were yet sinners. Christ died for the ungodly. Teach people love. Teach them the love of Christ. If you teach love, you will encourage the folks in love. And love covers a multitude of sin. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. My last point comes from verses 16 and 17. It's walk in the spirit. It says this in the New King James Version. I say this, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Oh, hallelujah. A believer, all of us believers, have the presence of of the indwelling Holy Spirit and the personal power for living a life pleasing to God. When we walk, meaning that this is how we live, this is how we move, this is how we have our being, when we walk in the Spirit, it means that, that, that we are progressing. I may not do what I used to do, and I may not be who I used to be, but, but because I got Christ Jesus in me, because I got his Holy Spirit in me, I'm, 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 I'm a work in progress, and, and he's preparing me for heaven. That I might walk and do the things that he would have me to do. And I'm here to tell you, the best thing you can do as a child of God, I'm going to say it and I'm going to keep saying it all on, you are free to love. Love yourself. Love your neighbor. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart and all of your soul. Love is the key. Love, love, love. As I end this message today, I want to encourage you to walk in love. Walk in the Spirit, because the Spirit is full of love. We are saved and made free by our faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection provides for our freedom. Watch out for those who want to take away your freedom by teaching you things that are not part of the gospel message. But because of our freedom in Christ, we should not be selfish and unkind to others. We should be good examples of God's love. We should love and serve others. Oh, hallelujah. 
we should love and serve others. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for sending Jesus to die for our sins and to make us free. Help us not to add to or take away from the gospel message. Help us, Lord, to walk in the spirit and to love, to love you, O oh Lord, with all our heart and soul and to love our neighbor as ourself. That we might fulfill your love here on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Before I end this broadcast, I'd like to give those who are listening an opportunity to give your life to Christ. And uh, we're going to pray the prayer of salvation. is based on, on Romans 10.9 and Romans 10.13. Romans 10 verses 9 and 10 and then Romans uh, 10 verse 13. Romans 10 verse 13 says, Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verses 9 and 10 of Romans 10 says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died for your sins and that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So we're going to call on the name of the Lord and we're going to confess him as our Lord and Savior with our mouth. And I pray that you believe it in your heart that you might be saved. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we come confessing you as our Lord and our Savior. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to forgive us of all of our sins and come into our heart. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for forgiving us and thank you, Lord, for coming into our hearts. Help us now, dear Heavenly Father, by sending your Holy Spirit into our heart to help us live by your way, your way of love. Thank you, and we praise you. Thank you for saving our souls. Thank you, Lord, for making us whole. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer and truly believe it in your heart, you are now saved. And you can walk now in the spirit and walk in love. Facebook, you be blessed. We're going into overtime on the conference call where we'll have a, a discussion. If you want to call in and, and have a discussion with us, the number for the conference call is 910 218-0531. We'll see you next Sunday on Facebook. And as always, be blessed and be a blessing. May God bless you and keep you.